Uh, General Neyland uh, probably said it best, the team that makes the fewest mistakes will win. Uh, we did obviously not uh, play to that standard on Saturday. Everybody in the building is disappointed. Uh, you can still sense it from the players today, uh, the disappointment and, uh, and hurt. Um, and uh, a lot of lessons for us to learn, and we better learn them quick. Um, at the same time, those lessons got to carry forward, but uh, we got to watch this one too. We got a really good opponent coming in to, to Neyland uh, this Saturday. Uh, it's a football team that's won a bunch of games over the last couple of years, experienced, uh, have playmakers. They're big, strong, physical on the line of scrimmage, both sides of the ball too. So uh, be a really good test. I'll open it up. Coach, you mentioned disappointment in the building from the players and, and, and staff. Do you think a large part of that stems from just you know looking, knowing how many self-inflicted wounds there were, how many mistakes? Yeah, um, you look at uh, offensively, um, in particular. You know, we total you know self-inflicted wounds that can be penalties, that can be you know unforced errors, it can be communication. Uh, our percentage is way too high. Uh, it was on Saturday, and it really was the week before, too. And so, um, you know, that's why you move the ball at times, but you don't have very many points. Um, and uh, we got to clean that up. You, you can't, can't beat yourself. Is there anything that you can do in practice to help kind of prevent those self-inflicted wounds, especially the penalties, or is it kind of just a reset, refocus, and a focus on the discipline? Well, I do think uh, you can't let one play affect another. Um, that certainly happened um, during the course of the, the first half in particular. Uh, the communication things just, like, it can't transpire that way. And, you know, that's us coaches being better. It's players being better. It's better up front. And, um, at the end of the day, we got to find a solution to it. And, um, you know, I, I told the players this today, too. It, it's, it's not the big things, and, and those are big things, don't get me wrong, but it's the subtle details in, in everything that we're doing. And, you know, everybody can't take their turn of, of being off. And we got to become a unit that, that plays 11 together all of the time, defensively, too, in particular in the first half. But um, we're fully capable. We need to take a step forward quickly. Uh, just a couple questions on the Gerald Mincy situation. He didn't play on offense the other night. Was that punishment for the citation? Yeah, we just uh, decided not to uh, to play him on the offensive side of the ball. And, and why did he play on special teams? But yeah, no. we just made that decision. Will he be available to play on uh, on Saturday? Yeah, we got a long week here. We'll uh, we'll go through the week. Was Dylan Sampson available to play? He did not. He was. Um, he's been a little bit nicked up, but he was available. Uh, had plans of, you know, having him in the rotation. Uh, and I think on both sides of the football, um, the flow of the game, in particular in the first half, um, probably we didn't rotate the way we anticipated going into the football game and probably as much as we needed to, too. And how did you assess the offensive line when you went back and watched the tape? Um, at the end of the day, just not as consistent as we need them to be. Um, and that's really the entire offensive unit. I thought the wide receivers took a step in the right direction, um, you know, from from how they had performed uh, the previous weeks. But uh, collectively, as a group, just not as consistent as as you need to be to to go on the road, to play a good team, and uh, be able to move the football and ultimately score points. Like the the self inflicted wounds that goes into, you know, how you're you're scoring in the red zone too. And and um, it's not a game of un unlimited opportunities. You got to maximize them. You can't put yourself in you know first and twenty and and uh, try to play ball. Yeah, defensively uh, on third down, were they doing anything to cause you guys problems with shifts and movements? Was it bad communication? Was it just simple physical execution? I'm just talking about third down in yeah. general. Uh, I mean, the, they had a bunch of third, third and mediums and third and longs. They did early. Uh, we had them in some third and long situations too. And uh, our games, uh, he was able to get outside of the pocket uh, where we don't keep a contain on it. Um, we don't match things on the back end. Give up two routes uh, on the sideline when you know we're sitting in a hard corner. We should be all over that. So, um, you know, a little bit of the run fits. Um, guys are like not completely out of their gap, but their their eyes are caught in the wrong spot for a split second. They're a step, step and a half behind, and, and um, you give up a, a vertical seam. Coach, how, how did when you went back and watched, how did you assess 
Joe's play, good, bad, otherwise? Uh, there's some, some real positives, uh, the efficiency, the communication, uh, handling all that. We have to be better. He's got to be better. And the guys up front got to be better, too. And some of our skill guys as well. You mentioned that not everybody can have their turn to be off. When you look at the first three games, is the needle moving on kind of what the, the biggest issue is, or is it kind of the same few issues every game? Um, the needle has moved uh, on some of it. Uh, some of it uh, from week two to week three didn't completely get cleaned up. Um, we got to grow and, and go. Um, you know, <clears throat> for, for our football team, I said this, like, Everybody sees the big picture stuff. The the small details is where this game's got to be won and played, and we have to get better at that. Josh, how important is it to to operate in your offense to be able to escape the pocket and throw off platform and sort of create plays from that quarterback position? Extended plays are a big part of any offense in today's game because of what you're facing up front. Uh, the pressure packages that you're inevitably going to see, uh, the ability to move, make plays with your feet is a part of the game. That can be tucking it and running it. It can also be extending and making plays you know, outside of the pocket where you're throwing the football down the field. Josh, I know you can't replicate crowd noise on the road in the SEC, but in practice throughout the week, what are some things you can do to try to prepare for that? Um, we've done a lot of things. Um, Need to ramp it up, I guess. Uh, and when I say I guess, I mean only intensify it. Um, we got to be able to function better than we did. Part of that is the noise. Part of it's being able to reset from one play to the next. That's the, the hardest part to replicate during practice. Josh, I guess most of us who aren't football coaches probably look at a, a quarterback's play as was this throw accurate or did a guy hold on to the ball too long or something like that. But as someone who obviously designed the offense. And, we we and, look at that too. Yeah, but in terms of like all the other stuff that y'all do look at, right, in terms of, you know, managing, administering the offense, how, where is Joe in that part of the game? He did some really good things the, the other night. Um, you know, the pick, uh, we can't just throw it up. Uh, he'd like to have that one back. Man, we got to be better in protection, too, in, the, in that situation. Um, the decision-making, where he's going with the football, I said it before the game. I sa I'll say it after the game, too. He was in the right spots. Accuracy, like wide receivers being exact in their routes, all those things got to continue to improve for us to be as efficient as we need to be. Josh, on the short yardage stuff offensively, I know that was a point of emphasis heading into last year. You guys were good. You've had some opportunities in all three games in fourth and short, and it's not gone well at all. What, what do you look at there? What, what's kind of happening in fourth and short? Yeah, um, some of those scenarios are, are different as far as what happens. Um, a lot of it, um, we internally, like we have to execute what we're doing. And that's where we're targeting, how we're targeting them, uh, the fundamentals of it. We have to execute better in some of those situations. Some of those things we've practiced those exact looks. And at the end of the day, coaches and players, we got to get to where we need to be. You have to execute on third down. Third and short should be a situation where you're picking it up, you know, 90% of the time. And we got to be better in those situations. Early in the week, but what does UTSA look like on film and in your studies, and how different are they offensively from one quarterback to the next? They play two. Yeah, I, I haven't studied a ton of them on the offensive side of the football. I have watched them, um, uh, you know, in recent history. The, the quarterback that is their starting quarterback is a special player. Uh, it's a football team that's won two back-to-back -back conference champion, uh, ch championships. They've won 10-plus games the last two years. Um, they've lost a couple of close ones this year, but they're a really good football team. They play extremely hard. They play with really good fundamentals. They make you beat them. Uh, this will be a this is a really good football team that's coming in Neyland on Saturday. It feels like you guys are moving it between the twenties, putting up quite a bit of yardage, but failing to get into the end zone. What what do you think is holding you back? And then once you went back and watched the film, what what did you like out of what Ricky Gibson gave you the other night as a freshman? The uh, the efficiency in the red zone, 
the lack of it, and it's been a huge part of our success since we've gotten here, directly correlates to the self-inflicted wounds that I was talking about. That, like, you can't, you can't beat yourself. You're playing a good opponent. Like, in a boxing match, they're going to hit you once in a while. you got to hit back, but you can't just give them free reign. And, and um, when you put yourself in those types of situations, man, it's really difficult to overcome. That's true in the open field, but it's really difficult when the field starts restrict, restricting. We're capable of being better than we are. we we got to get there quickly. Ricky uh, went in the ball game. Um, he's somebody that is continuing to gain trust uh, from our, our coaching staff. Uh, he's athletic. He's done a good job on special teams. Uh, got an opportunity to play some on uh, on Saturday night on, on defense. Uh, I said it to him today. We need him to to grow quickly. After the game on Saturday, Brew McCoy said a loss like that can light a fire under the team. Have you seen that urgency since getting back from Gainesville? And we're just getting going in this week. Um, the first thing is it better hurt and better matter. Uh, you could see that uh, from our players yesterday and today. Uh, I think I said it earlier. At the same time, all those lessons got to move forward, but you also got to wa wash this one clean. You know what I mean? When, when our players come back later today, uh, we got to move on to the next one. That'll be really important for us as a staff and, and as, a, as a program. Josh, you had talked the first couple of weeks about liking the tackling uh, on, on the defensive side yeah. of things. Safe to say Saturday was kind of a surprise. And, and when, you, when you went back and watched, what led to the tackling issues? Yeah, the, uh, you know, defensively, there were a couple times where we got out of our gap. Um, and when I say out of our gap, not that we don't, we're completely m missing our gap, just we're behind. And so, you know, a linebacker being a step behind allows that double team to be thicker than to climb up on the second level and you create a vertical seam. And when I talk about the game being played in margins, those are the subtle details that I'm talking about that happen on the defense side of the ball and the offensive side of the ball. It's not a complete wholesale change. We just have to be more efficient in what we're doing. Um, the tackling issues, in particular in the first half, uh, some poor fundamentals, and um, a couple times where the, uh, the effort's not very good. Josh, when you're looking at the communication from sideline to booth, sideline to, to field, and those sort of things on offense, how do you gauge after the game whether or not that was, that was efficient enough or is fast enough? Um, how, how do you guys as Man, coaches do that? For us, like the efficiency of our tempo, we don't ever put a stopwatch to it. It's just how the bodies are moving, um, our ability to communicate, get lined up, get our cleats in the ground, identify who we're targeting, and all 11 guys operate in sync. Um, you got to be able to do that. Um, we didn't do it well enough, obviously, uh, on Saturday night. Thank you, Coach. Thank you all. Have a great afternoon.